Well, anyways, <laughs> on to lighter news. Can we talk about the e-drama? The League of Legends streamer <laughs> e-drama? Because I have seen so many people being talking, having been talked about this. And I, I'm going to be honest, I kind of don't care, but it's kind of nice to talk about things that I don't care about because I have no skin in the game. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. <laughs> it's actually kind of fun. I don't know if you guys agree or disagree or whatever. I've seen so many people having been talked about this. Stop, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm a little cooked. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I don't know anything about the League of Legends space because I don't care. <laughs> I only know Tyler 1 because Tyler 1's crazy. That's it. <laughs> and everybody knows Tyler 1, right? So I don't know. I don't know anything about League. I'm going to be honest. I don't know anything about League. But I've been seeing this post. This has 54 million people have seen this. Oh my, okay, so yeah, I saw this post like only a hundred times yesterday on my fucking dashboard. All you need to know is faker number one, real? Faker number one, real? Think Valorant, it would be similar in competitor. What, what do you mean? Actually really real. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, anyways, so I guess this guy, I guess this guy is a league player, league streamer, I guess. Um, and then he tweeted this out. <laughs> Laura and I broke up while I could sit here and try and explain for the reasons why it all comes down to one simple truth. I'm not ready for a relationship from the get go. I told her my career would be priority. My first priority she always did everything she could to accommodate that fact, whether it be bringing me food, supporting me after a bad day, encouraging me when I was down, or being an ear I could listen to, that could listen to all my problems. She was, in all ways possible, everything I ever wanted. Problem is, however, relationships are about compromise. Seeing her take steps back in her own life and career in order to support me while I was unwilling and unable to do the same for her is just something that, over time, took its toll on me mentally. I came to the realization that the very foundation of what relationships are wasn't something I was able or willing to do as a result. I made the decision to end things. I won't pretend that I know if I made the right choice or not. The only thing I can say is that I'm eternally grateful for the time and love that we shared. At the end of the day, I'd rather live regretting a choice that I did make than going through life always second-guessing myself. Going forward, I only ask that you show her nothing but support since she was always the one who gave all her all with understanding me and trying to work through everything. Thank you. Okay, so can I say a couple things on this? Can I say a couple things? I saw this tweet first. Because of this tweet, she cooked for him, cleaned for him, supported his League of Legends career while he did absolutely nothing in return just to get dumped. We are so cooked. Okay, so that was the tweet that I saw initially, <laughs> which is kind of a crazy tweet. I'm not going to lie. That's kind of an insane tweet, by the way. <laughs> personal, personal opinion. <laughs> Okay, sorry, distracted. Anyways, can I say some? Can I can I say something? Can I say something? First of all, I love to make fun of people who are gamers. <laughs> Even though I'm a gamer, <laughs> I love making fun of people who are gamers. It is so tempting, just because I'm like, uh, I belong on the internet. I truly am at home when I'm on the internet. I just want to flame people for no reason. Like, there's nothing, there's no reason for me to want to do it, but I just want to do it. Sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm having fun playing a video game, but someone on my team is doing poorly and it's fine. We're winning, but I'm just, I just want to talk shit. Like, I just want to be like, so do you usually play with your monitor off or no? Nah. <laughs> it's just something about it. I just want to have some fucking fun, dude. We need blood out here. Okay. <laughs> All right, just a little bit of joy, joy, just a little bit of entertainment, okay? Jesus, you must play Overwatch. I mean, me, I don't play any games. I don't have time to play video games. I don't I don't play any. Don't be ridiculous. Um, I'm the noob you're making fun of and it hurts me. <laughs> well, I think people's response is funny, okay? <laughs> okay 
I'm I'm sorry, okay? And the way I see it is, the way I see it, okay, is you can just mute me if you want to. That's what I do to people. There was a time when I played League where as soon as I would get into the game, I would just mute. I I wouldn't even bother waiting for people to type in chat because I knew that they were going to talk shit because I knew I was (laughs) eating shit all game. So I would literally get into the game and the first thing I would do would be to mute everyone in chat so that no one could type to me. Because it's like, you can't hurt me if I can't see it. (laughs) Just walk away from the computer, duh. So that's I kind of like Loki, if if it really gets to you, you can just do that, which is what I've done historically, right? Historically, if there are times where the I just can't do it and I just don't want to deal with everyone typing shit at me, I just, just mute everything. It's fine. You're good. Mute all. Easy. But I also like to shit talk, okay? I like to enjoy. <laughs> I like to have some fun, all right? <laughs> I like to have some joy. And so in that same regard, just the fact that somebody plays League of Legends, it makes me want to bully them. It doesn't matter how many hours I have. That's not relevant. Just the fact that somebody does it, it just makes me want to laugh at them. And then the idea, I think, (laughs) to go a step further, to say that you are bitchless because of your League of Legends gameplay, because League of Legends and your focus on your career in League of Legends is making you bitchless. There's something about that that's so... (sighs) Because I am a good person, I would never do it. But know that the desire is there, okay? (laughs) The desire is there. That's my toxic streamer. Yeah, it's like theater kids, okay? You guys know this feeling. It's like when you see a theater kid. It doesn't matter if it's the best theater kid you know. You just kind of want to shove them in a locker. It's the same thing with League of Legends. It doesn't matter how based you are. It doesn't matter how cool you are. It doesn't even matter how much pussy you get. The fact that you play League makes people want to bully you, right? <clears throat> so. <laughs> so. <laughs> with that in mind, okay? With that in mind. Will Neff is the exception here. He plays League and is a theater kid. Well, it cancels out at that point, I think. However, you also know, you guys should also know that um, how I feel about interpersonal relationships and their publicity. This feels like, I don't really feel like there's anything here. I don't, I'm honestly shocked that anyone even talked about it because I saw like the first post and it had like basically no views, no likes on it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, okay, it sounds like he just wanted to focus on streaming. Yeah, I mean, streaming can eat up all your time if you actually are very dedicated. Um, But, yeah, I don't, I I mean, people break up for lots of reasons. It's also none of our business why they broke up. And I don't think that any viewer is entitled to know why any creators broke up with each other. It's not your business. Like, it just doesn't matter. Now, they would never do it because I would have to write him a strongly worded letter. But if Ludwig and Cutie broke up, like, I don't I don't care why that happened. It's not my business. It's none of my personal business. Again, he can't do it because then I would write him a strongly worded letter about how he's fumbling and he needs to reconsider immediately. Um, Or I will put out a hit piece on him that he is white or something like that. But. If they did, people break up. People have interpersonal relationship stuff that can't get worked out. And that's okay. And it's not our business. Sometimes relationships can be complicated. Sometimes there doesn't even have to be any type of abuse or any type of mistreatment for you to just realize you aren't really a good match with someone. Right? My hot take, this blew up because a man finally realized that being a selfless narcissist is not the basis for a romantic relationship. Oh, (laughs) I did see his, he did have a little bit of middle school syndrome with one of the old tweets I saw or like Discord messages I saw. I don't have any ill will against the guy, okay, to be very clear. I don't even know who this is and I don't care. And to be honest, I don't even think that he should have had to do this. I think he should have just been able to say, hey, we're not together. Please don't harass her. We're good. That's great. That's great to me. And my and again, like I said, in my opinion, 
unless there is a instance where someone is very clearly abusive, like in the instance with um, Shovel and Wilbur, for anyone who had missed it, Minecraft YouTubers being just insane, Minecraft YouTubers and streamers being insane. This guy was like chewing his girlfriend and like leaving bruises all over her. And she would tell him, can you stop? And he wouldn't stop. And then people started seeing the bruises. So he started chewing places of her that weren't easily visible. And that's like, amidst a bunch of other things, I'm sorry, chewing, like he would bite her really hard. But he would like bite her all over her arms. And like other people who interacted with, him said that he tried to bite them as well. Is he a fucking zombie? I mean, he's British, so close, I guess. Just buy a chew toy. That's what I'm saying, dude. I don't know. I don't fucking know. I, I don't know. It, it's not. It's not normal. OK, that's what I will say. OK, chew, giving your partner a bite. Honestly, I feel like do you even love who you're dating if you're not if you don't bite them once in a while? biting them until they start getting bruised and they have to tell you to stop biting them and you're leaving bruises all over their body that's not normal that's not normal like that is not normal okay <laughs> every every girly pop loves a little a little nibble you know it's like a, a little taste no normal person is doing what he was doing and in those instances or other types of instances where there is very clear abuse or uh, very clear power dynamics that were being abused. Um, yeah, I can understand, right? I can understand publicizing that because you don't want other people to enter a relationship with this person not knowing that he's physically abusive. Outside of those instances, I don't really care what happened in your personal relationship. I don't think it needs to be public. And I think it's weird that people uh, have to make things public. Um, but I have to say, this is hilarious. This is a hilarious message to send in 2022. <laughs> this is a hilarious message to send two years ago. I'm someone who's meant to be alone. That's all. I can't help the way my mind is. And I'm not yet at the point. Wait, I made a terrible mistake. Stop reading. Stop reading. I used to be 15 as well. Okay, so I I understand. Where's like the Hold up. I'm finding a perfect soundtrack. There we go. <laughs> we got it. This is a good volume for you guys. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I'm someone who's meant to be alone. That's all. I can't help the way my mind is. I am not yet at the point where I can overcome it. You deserve and you will find someone better. That person just can't be me. I never said I wouldn't, only that I'd try not to. If it makes you feel better, this is the way it always ends. My mind always gets the better of me. <laughs> it's just a little, it's just a little... Okay, that's it. <laughs> I just think it's kind of funny. <laughs> all right. All right. Now, now that we've gotten all the formalities out of the way, I'm not... I don't think that he's at fault. In fact, I think it's relatively... I think it's a good thing to be able to recognize that you cannot provide someone else with what they want, whether that is a failing of your own or if that is because of a genuine reason and breaking that relationship up, right? Especially if you know the other person wants more. I think you have a moral obligation 
to be a good person. And I think part of being a good person is not stringing people along. If that makes sense. I think I think if you know somebody wants more out of a relationship and you know you're never going to give them that, I think you have a moral obligation to not string them along. In the same way that, for example, let's say you started dating someone who wanted kids and you knew 100% you did not want kids. There was no like maybe, there was no like at the right age. It's just, I know I don't want this. I know I'm never going to want this ever, ever, ever. This is just not something I'm interested in. And this person wants to date you and you keep stringing them along and they're like, I want to get, I want to have kids with you or whatever. And you're just like, haha, yeah. And to be clear, that person, the other person in that relationship has a, is, it, it's imperative that they take care of themselves and recognize that you are not going to give them what you want or what they want rather. But like, what can you do, right? Some people, some people, it's hard for some people to break up relationships. Right? Haha, <laughs> yeah, lol. Miss Kadiva, thank you for the prime. Thank you. You're 100% right about not posting this online. I don't want people oversharing like this. I want weirdos knowing about personal stuff about them. I just, I just don't think that there's, I just don't think that there's a reason for this to, to, I don't think that there's anything here to make fun of is my point. That's in, that's valid, if that makes sense. So yeah, I think A, if you're in a relationship and you realize you're not going to get what you want out of that relationship because um, your partner is very work driven and they will not give up their work for you and they will not give you what you want, you should probably break up with them right? But for a lot of people, that's easier said than done. And so I also believe that if you are the person on the other end of that, you should break up with them for them because you know that they want something else and you're not doing it. And you're basically saying, I'm going to enjoy this relationship because I'm getting what I want for as long as I want until they decide that, until they realize that they're not going to get what they want. If that makes sense. Really, Usarian? Oh, no. <laughs> On the other hand, I'm in the chatter from a few weeks ago. I just bought a ring for his partner. She said yes. Oh, Pog! Congrats! I'm so happy for you. Fucking chatter is getting married. Unbelievable. Way to show off, bro. <laughs> also, they share a lot of better, so him explaining... They share a lot of viewers, so him explaining it is better than letting them speculate in her chat. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 100%. One million percent. Um, my point is just that both things can be true, that if you are the person, if you were the, the girlfriend in this situation, you should be able to realize that the person you're dating is not going to give you what you want out of a relationship. And so you need to break it off. That like the heartbreak is worth the temporary loss so that you can find happiness later. But also as the other person, you have a moral imperative to not hurt this person because ripping the Band-Aid off can be really difficult. Both of those things can be true, right? In the same way that, like, if you went into a dark alley and you got mugged, maybe you shouldn't be going in dark alleys, <laughs> maybe, with, like, bags of money, as an example. But also, you as a random person probably shouldn't be going and mugging people, right? Both of those things can be true. You can do things to protect yourself and engage in self-preservation. But at the end of the day, the other person who is doing the bad thing, the morally wrong thing, has an imperative to not be morally wrong, to not do things that are, are bad, right? I mug them to teach them not to carry any money. Yeah, exactly. Charles Post, thank you so much for six months. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Don Juan. Okay. 
that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Denims, maybe don't go down the you were asking for it line of thinking, dot, dot, dot. I'm talking about the phenomenon of engaging in self-preservation. I can make you uh, <laughs> look mad sus by saying something else. Maybe don't engage in victim blaming by telling your black kids that they're going to run into experiences with the cops that are not going to be good and they need to do what they're asked. Oh, you told you as a black person told your black kid that the cops will try to kill you. And that you need to do everything that they ask. That's kind of victim blaming of your kid. That's kind of weird that you're victim blaming. It's like, no. I was just messing. Please don't do this to me. Okay. Schrodinger's. Schrodinger's joke. <laughs> okay. It's, it's all good, man. It's all, it's, it's, no, it's all good, man. It's good. You were joking. My bad. Sorry. I didn't know you were joking. Apologies. Anyways. Anyways. Yeah, you can do things that are good for you while also recognizing that the other person is doing the bad thing, right? You can be very careful around the cops because you don't want the cops to kill you while also recognizing that it's the fault of the cops and that's the reason that people are getting murdered. It's not because, like, you should be able to yell at a cop and nothing bad happens to you. You should be able to tell a cop, suck my dick, and nothing happens to you. Like, just you're walking down the street, just walking down the street, just hanging out, just vibing, and you walk past a cop, and you're like, dude, I fucking hate cops. You guys suck. And it should be the case that nothing happens to you. However, you probably shouldn't do that <laughs> because cops are fucking power-hungry freaks. And they might try to detain you or kill you, and you shouldn't do that. But you should be able to. We, sh we should be allowed to, just like we should be allowed to walk through dark alleys. In an ideal world, you should not be forced to change your behavior because of the shitty people around you. But that's not the world we live in, right? Moving on anyways. So yeah, TLDR. I think it's actually pretty cool that he recognized sooner rather than later that like, oh, you're not going to be happy with me because I'm not going to give you what you want. So I'm breaking this relationship up. Sorry. Everybody at my audience, please don't harass her. In fact, I kind of give him a lot of credit for doing this, saying I only ask you show her nothing but support since she's always the one who gave her all with understanding me and trying to work through everything. Um, I think on Twitch, when couples break up on Twitch, basically consistently, whoever the woman was in the couple... Which one of you is the <laughs> sorry? <laughs> Fucking gay jokes. Anyways, usually if there is if it's a straight relationship, the woman in the relationship tends to get a lot of harassment. Right. So I think it's honestly pretty good that she that that he said this so she doesn't have to deal with at least probably as much harassment. She still will because it it's gonna happen regardless. But you know what? Sure. Cool. I, I respect that. I think it's really cool that he did that. I think it's great. Um, also, we don't know anything about their relationship, so it's hard to comment on it. But I will say one thing. Okay. All right. All I wanted to say was that I do not have any ill will towards this guy. All of that was foreplay, so I could just explain. I don't have any ill will towards this guy. I think what he did was correct. Okay. Now, <laughs> time to be toxic. <laughs> not actually. How is this related to Tyler One? The worst part is that it's not related to Tyler One. Can you believe it? Okay, toxicity time. Low-key? I feel like low-key. <laughs> this is just what happens if you don't like someone enough. Because I feel like... <laughs> When someone is in love with you, like they are madly in love with you, okay? All of their priorities rearrange. Every single one of their priorities rearrange. People will go very far 
for someone that they feel deep, like a deep connection to. Like straight up, I don't mean, I don't know how to tell you this. Men have started like wars, like actual wars for, for women. <laughs> okay. Like, I don't, uh, <laughs> you ever see someone, okay. Dare I use a pejorative term? You ever see someone too whipped? Often here, thank you for the prime. You, I've had female friends that were too whipped. I've had male friends that were too whipped. And I'm like, you are being so mistreated and you have no idea how mistreated you're being because you are so blind. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Will Smith, Will Smith is not a, a good example of this. You don't know anything about Will Smith. <laughs> you don't know anything about his relationship. You have no idea what he gets out of that relationship that he likes or that he doesn't like. I'm talking about conversations that you've had with your friends who are in relationships and you know, you know that they're so whipped, right? And you're like, dude, what are you doing? Oh my God. I, I knew a dude who I knew a dude who was so in love with this trick that he had only known for two months, who lied to him, <laughs> who asked for a break, who went and hung out with other people, let's say. And he was whipped the entire time, like the entire time he was like, I just want to get back together. And I'm like, dude, she just is not that into you. Like, I don't know how to tell you this. She's just not that into you. I've had female friends who, God bless their hearts, I have had to rescue. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain rescue other than rescue. I've had at least one female friend, okay? I've had multiple who have been in this situation, but I've, I've at least had one that I've rescued out of this situation. Women in long-term relationships with live-in partners that do nothing. And before I, I see the silliest comments in chat, let me explain nothing, okay? I met both of these people, okay? I stayed with them in their house. I understood, I was friends with them, okay? In this particular relationship, um, this is my personal friends. We'll call them Sarah and Adam, okay? Sarah lived in the U.S., Adam lived in some European country. Men are so dumb. You guys are so dumb. This is so male brain. Good dick, but no goals or job. You guys are so stupid. You think these dudes lay pipe? They don't. They don't. They don't, they don't do shit out here. You're silly for even thinking it. But continuing on my story. So Sarah and Adam. So Sarah lives here in the States. Adam lives in uh, some dumb, stupid European country where they talk funny. And they are e-dating and they're like, okay, you want to know what? I feel like we've been e-dating for so long. I want to live together. That would be so much cooler than fucking only being able to see each other once a year. So they get married because you have to get married to live in the U.S. indefinitely. So they get married. Um, and then Adam just stops giving a fuck. Just totally stops giving a fuck after about like a few months, I would say of them being married. And uh, Sarah is paying all the bills. Obviously, he doesn't have a job. He just moved to a different country. Um, she's also going to school. Okay, Sarah's the American. Because I think men think that women can't be whipped, and you're very wrong. Women do this thing where they cope about the dog shit partners that they're dating because society tells them to cope. So let's continue. So Sarah's currently working, okay, and paying all the bills. Um, Sarah also goes to school full time to college. Uh, she also does all of the cooking and cleaning. Um, and uh, she never has any sex, ever.
I know. Yeah. And I'm sure you're thinking, well, what must what must Adam be doing that is that is having that is eating all of his time? What could he possibly be doing that's eating all of his time? Um, Diablo four. I think at the time it was Diablo three. And this happened. This was going on, okay, <laughs> for four years. And I was talking to her and I was like, <laughs> it doesn't sound like you're very happy, okay? I mean, I met the guy. I, I, I hung out with him for a weekend when I stayed over at their place. He's, he's a cool guy. He's chill. Um, not someone I would go for personally. Um, I like, I, I like someone with a little bit more, uh, fight in them and he didn't have that much fight in them. He was just kind of like a person that existed. <laughs> uh, but he was, he was fine. Like he was, he wasn't like a bad person. He was, yeah, he was just a little NPC. Yes, correct. That's how I would describe him. He was just a little bit of an NPC. Um, and for the people, not that any of this matters. So this is another problem, right? Another problem with like the internet and in incels on the internet is that men have been convinced that this doesn't happen to women, but it definitely happens to women. Okay. It happens to them a lot. I, this is not, this is the third person I've met like this. Okay. And the common thing is like, well, they, this dick must be huge. It's, it never is. Okay. Well, he must be a giga chad that's like six foot five uh, draw line. He never is. Not that it matters, okay? Because most of the women who end up in these relationships are usually not shallow people, which is why they're doing all the work in their relationships. But like in this specific instance, Lord, uh, forgive me for I, sh I am about to sin. Please forgive me. Please, please, I'm sorry. Um, he was balding, but he did the thing that you never do ever, which is he was comb overing with bangs. And he was like five, nine. And to be clear, like I said, two seconds ago, like I said, two seconds, not that it matters. Okay. Not that it matters. Okay, if you're balding, just embrace the balding. Fucking just take out the fucking razor and go in, man. All right? But, like, I think that there is this delusion that a lot of men have on the internet that they think that you have to be this giga chad that makes super amounts of money and you're the sexiest and big dick or just something, and that's the only way you can get bitches. And it's just not true. It's not true. Um, because women love softies. They love softies and they love sentimental behavior and they're down to stay in relationships for a very long time for that type of shit. Lover boys, precisely. And again, I don't think he was abusive, okay? Why'd you say 5'9 like it's short? I didn't. I said like he's 5'9, like average. I'm saying that he was not a, a crazy paragon or a specimen or anything like he was just like an average looking guy like just all i meant low-key that is kind of projection on your part though <laughs> not to mention that like i've spoken many times about how i don't give a shit about height and i've never understood i've never ever understood the obsession with height and i never will i think but i also um i must have like girl autism or something because i also don't agree with a lot of societal rules <laughs> But anyways, <laughs> um, tall men protect better. <laughs> what do I need protection from? Like, what, I don't leave my house, but I, I <laughs> come on, be real. Okay. All I need is someone that will talk to maintenance staff and someone who will talk to the plumber and, um, basically all the social interactions I don't want to do. That's what I need, okay? And you don't need to be a certain height to do that. I don't give a shit what your height is, okay? 
You just need to be able to do that. Just like the, the plumber is here to fix. Can you talk to him? I don't want to talk to him. I have this. You want me to talk? No, I only talk to stream. I only talk to chat. You do that. We, we, I can do it, but I don't want to. Can't you do that? Oh my God. It's like my spiders. Like I'm down to pick up spiders and take them outside. I'm down to get rid of bugs. I don't want to. You're not going to make me interact with strangers, are you? Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> don't make me do that. <laughs> What's the point of having a boy wife if they aren't even willing to talk to the internet provider when they're here? Oh, come on. Please. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, <clears throat> can talk to all 1.7 of us, but can't talk to Mario or Luigi at the doors. Oh. God damn. Okay. <laughs> damn. It's kind of toxic, kind of rude. It's just... Uh, Sometimes they're too friendly and they just talk too much. And I'm just like, I, I don't, it's like, it's like when you get in an Uber ride and you don't want to talk to the driver and then they start talking. It's like, I don't want to talk to you. I just, I want to sit here and listen to my music in silence. Is that, is that mean? Is that mean that I don't want to talk to anyone right now? I'm sorry. I don't want to. But anyways, when they say more than two words, enough. Yeah. <laughs> or like you go to the barber and they're just yapping. It's like. How do I find one that just doesn't say anything? How do I find one of those? <laughs> I'll pay you more money. I, I just don't want to talk to anyone. I'm sorry. But anyways, anyways. Anyways. <laughs> I had to learn not to talk when I got a haircut. And the worst part is, the worst part is, just on this topic really quickly, the conversations, 50% of the time, the conversations are actually interesting. And the other thing that sucks is if you work that job, you would want to talk to people. Who the fuck wants to do hair for other people silently all day? And the other thing is some clients want you to talk to them and they'll pay you more for being friendly and being a conversationalist. So like, I'm just mad because <laughs> I want to be a New Yorker and I'm not allowed to be a New Yorker. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> I want to be a New Yorker and have no one talk to me, <laughs> but I can't have that. I want to talk to people when I want to talk to them. Okay. When I'm going to a social setting that is made for talking to people. Right. <laughs> anyways, anyways, not, this is either, neither here nor there. Okay. Moving on, moving on back to the topic at hand. Sarah and Adam. Right. So TLDR, um, I'm like talking to Sarah. I'm like, dude, why are you with this guy? He doesn't cook. He doesn't clean. He doesn't do anything that falls into household or everyday tasks. You guys don't even have sex. He doesn't work or go to school. He spends all his time playing Diablo. What are like, what? Why are you still in this relationship? And she's like, well, he's nice. Not in like an abusive way. It's just like, He's nice to me and he makes me feel happy. And I'm scared about like going back in the dating market and not like finding someone that's nice. And going through a divorce is so much work. And I, I just don't, I just don't want to. And I'm like, girly pop, you can get a dog. <laughs> like I, what you are, what you are getting from this man right now is, is not a human being. You are getting affection and you are keeping this person for affection you can get an animal that will give you affection if nice what's the problem well the problem is that she wants to date someone who has their own hobbies she wants to date someone who plans out dates she wants to date someone who has a career that makes them happy Like, that's what she wants. I'm not talking about this guy. I'm talking about Sarah and Adam, two separate people, my friends. Um, so yeah, and then eventually, TLDR, she was super demotivated to go through 
was ending the relationship because she had to file divorce papers. And she, nobody wants to fucking file divorce papers or deal with any of that shit. Because then you have to get a lawyer and then all this other shit and it's annoying, right? But he was, a, he was chill about everything. He was like, I understand, like, you know, they tried to work out their problems and it's just not fixable. Um... And she was just like, yeah, I, I think I want to get a divorce. And then he was like, oh, okay, sure. All of that was to say, all of that was to say, which I'm pretty sure he's better now. Um, she's now in a happy relationship with somebody else. With someone who plans dates and takes them to Ren Fair and um, has hobbies and does stuff. And that's like, she's in a good place now. And he, I think he went back to whatever European country he was from and uh, just went back to school, basically. So it's a good ending for him, too, because being a neat isn't <laughs> a great life goal to have. <laughs> my point is, my point is, with that relationship, some women be whipped. Okay. Some men be whipped, some women be whipped. A meet what? Neat. N-E-E-T. Not educated, employed, or in training. Basically just referring to people who live in their mom's basements. Um, yeah, neat. What does whip mean? Basically just like you're at the whim of this other person. You're wrapped around their finger, but it's in a pejorative sense. Okay? So all of that was to say... Women can be whipped. Men can be whipped. All right? Some people, sometimes when you're dating someone, you just don't like them that much. And sometimes you like them so much, you stop being rational. And you start engaging in self-destructive behavior. But there's a healthy middle in there. There's a healthy middle in there where I think you like them just the right amount you like them just the right amount that you're willing to work out all of your issues and you want to be with them and you want to make them happy and they also want that for you great that's like a good healthy middle in there somewhere right but then there is of course too whipped or you're just not that into them and I feel like my hot take on everything here is it seems like he just wasn't that into her because I feel like the right person for you regardless of your gender will make you make time for them. If you like someone enough, you make time for them. You do the things that make them happy. And that's fine, to be clear. I'm not blaming him or blaming her. Sometimes you're just not that into somebody else for personal reasons. Like, there are people that I haven't been interested in that on paper are perfect. Like, everything that could be right with someone is right with them but they just are missing that it factor for me. Sometimes it's just, you just aren't that into somebody else and that's okay. That's fine. Right? Letting her go was the right move? Yeah, and so I think this is just one of those instances where he very clearly happened to like his job more than he liked her. I don't think it's that he cares about his job over everything else. I don't think it's that his career is his top priority over everything else, no matter what. I think it's just his career was more important than his relationship with her, which is fair. I'm not blaming him for it. And I'm not shitting on him for it. That is a valid thing to say. That is totally valid. You should be able to end a relationship for any reason. That's totally acceptable, in my opinion. If you're just not that happy with someone, it doesn't, I think that that's a, I think that that's fine. I think when you have like kids and wedding and marriage and stuff, things can get a little different. But if you're like in a year long relationship or less, like that's a very good thing to do to be like, you know, honestly, I just care about stream more and I want to spend all my time doing this. It's not, it, it has nothing to do with you. And in fact, I'm sure for a lot of people, she is like the perfect girlfriend. Girlfriend who cooks and cleans for you and is there for you emotionally is your biggest cheerleader. I'm sure for a lot of people, that is something like she would be perfect for him, for, for them. But maybe not for him. Maybe he's just not that 
into it. Yeah. So I don't think that that's wrong. I think that that's fine. I recently broke up with my now best friend because I just wasn't feeling it. We still hang out all the time, but I just didn't feel like I was giving her what she deserved out of a partner. Totally valid. Totally valid. You're so, you're so cooked, intimacy. You're so cooked. NEAT, an acronym for not an education, employment, or training. This is a neoliberal propaganda as it excludes being a mother and father. It's a fake concept. This is a neoliberal and capitalist propaganda. Nothing wrong with being a NEAT. Okay, NEAT. <laughs> hey, guys, look, this guy's a NEAT. <laughs> Loser, loser. <laughs> oh, gosh, this is stupid. <sighs> Denims is a lib confirmed. True, true. Fucking true. Now, Denims, you're so cruel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think on principle, you should have things that make you um, happy and you should have hobbies that are not consumption. Um, I don't give a shit about how much productivity you put in. I don't care how educated you are. It's like nobody wants to date someone whose hobby is consumption, whose only hobby is consumption. What hobby isn't consumption? Drawing? as one of many examples. <laughs> There's a lot of hobbies that aren't consumption, actually. <laughs> Which I'm not saying you're not allowed to have consumption-based hobbies. I watch Netflix sometimes, that's fine. It's okay to be a consumer sometimes. But maybe you should have hobbies that aren't consumption. Enjoying nature is a, is a good example. Like going fishing, right, is a good example of a hobby that is not consumption. That is not somebody else created uh, content for you to consume. Somebody else made this thing for you and they made it as uh, good for your dopamine receptors as possible, right? Like video gaming, it's a consumption-based hobby. Which is fine, to be clear. I am also a consumer. I also like consumption. I also watch Twitch streams. I play a lot of video games. I watch Netflix. Yeah, that's all of that is consumption. It's anything that is that was made by somebody else to prey on your dopamine receptors is how I am defining consumerism and consumption. But there are lots of hobbies that have existed long before we had marketing, right? Making things, getting into like brewing beers is an example, or woodworking, or uh, doing DIY project, or getting into art, or getting into writing, or getting into video game making, um, getting into like language learning, um, this, things that will actually bring self-actualization to you, um, journaling, uh, is going to the gym consumption. The problem is that consumption, by my definition of consumption and anyone else's definition of consumption, going to the gym is not, it does not fall under that category. It wasn't made by somebody else to, to prey on your dopamine receptors. It's why sticking to a gym schedule is so hard and so many people struggle with it. It's not this brainless activity that you can do on autopilot in the way that like watching a TV show can be. You don't have to do any work. Somebody already did it all. You just have to watch. And again, to be very clear, I'm not saying that it's bad to consume, okay? <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm saying you should have at least some hobbies in your life that aren't that. Oh yeah, people helping at animal shelters, helping at uh, churches or whatever, um, yeah. I can disagree, by the way. I can disagree with your hobby. <laughs> But like, you have something, right? Brewing beer is consumption. I mean, any, 
I think if you're creating something, that's the hard part. Doing the creation of the thing is the hard part. If what you're doing is easy to do, it's consumption, right? A lot of hobbies you're mentioning require money to start getting into them, though. Um, not really. I mean, I spent $100 on a tablet when I was a teenager, and I kept the same tablet for like five years straight. And art supplies and an art program are free, if you know any pirates. I actually never got into physical mediums of art because I was too poor to afford canvases and paint. Um, so, yeah, that's not... <laughs> Shovels are like ten dollars. Start digging. <laughs> oh yeah, Le learning a language can be free if you go to a library. Um, resources at libraries are free, and getting a library card is free. Duolingo is free. Um, bird watching is free. Journaling is free. Uh, all of those things can be free or very low cost, mind you. You don't need. To spend a lot of money to have food watching Devons and sleeping DNM <laughs> low key real, low key real. Thank you, thank you for the 35. Thank you for the 35 months, Ezreal. <clears throat> my only point is, my only point is, um, self actualization hobbies require energy and work. So I don't think anyone should be like dedicating all of their free time to that. That sounds like in, that sounds like insanity, right? Um, but I think it would benefit most people to have something that brings them joy that isn't just consume, 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 consume. Right? I think that that's, that's not a crazy concept. I don't think that's an insane concept. Photography is a little bit weird just because when you get into photography, it can get really expensive if you want to do anything other than use your phone. And then there's also things that are somewhere in the middle, like D&D. D&D &D is like, there's some consumption there, but there's also a lot of creative creativity and a lot of like potential for self-actualization. You're doing a lot of work. <laughs> I think the best metric is how difficult is it to get new people to do this thing? If the answer is difficult, it is not a consumption-based hobby. It's easy to invite people over. If you already have like established friends that you hang out with, it's easy to invite them over and come watch a movie, to come watch a movie. Or if you have online friends, it's easy to get them to play a game, right? You ever try and schedule D&D? &D? Fucking nobody does their homework. Nobody fucking prepares their character sheets. Nobody does shit. Everyone is so, it's too much work. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever finished a D&D &D game because it's so much work. Or like trying to get someone, how many people, I better see fucking everybody's hands up here. How many people have failed <laughs> at keeping a consistent gym schedule? How many people have failed at learning a language? If, it, if it's something that most people will fail at because it requires a certain level of dedication and work, it's not a consumption-based hobby. It's not. Okay, moving on. Anyways, I don't even know how we got on here. Don't demoralize me. I'm level 15. I'm hoping to finish this campaign. <laughs> Dude, fucking keep your eyes on the prize. Fucking, I never got past level, I think, eight or nine. <laughs> keep your eyes on the prize. You can do it. You can get to level 20. You can experience what that is like. Why are you calling me out on national TV? Because I'm calling myself out. Okay, that's why. All right. <laughs> that's why I'm calling myself out. Um. Anyways, anyways. Uh... Yeah. I don't think it's that much of an ask. Okay. I don't think it's that much of an ask. I think you can have, and I think it would benefit you to have a hobby that you like that isn't an easy hobby to keep. Is book club a consumption-based hobby? You're consuming content to discuss it. Um, I think that falls into like the D&D &D category where it's somewhere in the middle. It's not quite fully consumption, but it's not quite fully work. If you genuinely love reading and reading is like playing video games, for me, I guess, and it's just easy to do for you, then that would be a consumption-based hobby. Um, oh, Mayor Cat, you can do it. Good for you. But you also, like, the discussion is the part that makes it not consumption. Yeah, like, organizing to plan... 
I'm in my, I'm in my, like, I'm too lazy to plan any hangouts phase of my life. Like the, the idea of sending a text message and saying, do you want to hang out is so much work for some bizarre reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's just impossible. It's like, I have people who I know want to hang out and play some laser tag and have a little dinner party. And they've told me that they want to. And I'm like, oh, but I don't know. I have to say, but I don't want to. <laughs> and it's like, what, 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 what? Just send the message. It's not hard. It's easy, actually. Okay, it's easy. What the fuck is wrong with me? Stop. Stop it. I need I need to become my own agent. I need to become my own life coach. Okay. Anyways, texting is hard. Oh God. Truly incredible. Truly incredible. Oh my God. Has anyone been called a zoomer pejoratively? I got a little mad about it. I'm not even a Zoomer. And I got a little bit mad about it. I queued for a game and I didn't notice that I got in the game and it auto-selected a champion for me. Or a hero, whatever they call it in Heroes of the Storm. And they were like, why did you pick that character? I was like, oh, sorry. I was, I forgot I was in queue. And they got mad at me. They're like, okay, fucking Zoomer. This is the problem with you people. Fucking, it's too hard to stay focused for 10 seconds to get in a queue. And I'm like, Damn. Whoa. Chill. It's just ARAM, man. Calm the fuck down. Not that serious. What the? Chill. <laughs> Jesus. So I hit him with the, the classic, are you ugly in real life? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Shuts the fuck up immediately. <laughs>